Right here, Jing. Big deal, Jing. It's Angelo's bus. Go to the back. Go to the back. Because I want to. Right here is fine. This place is known no, no, for uh, whales uh, out in the bay.
What's that, Jing? Watch out, Jing. Wait. Time to go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. Pools was running. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen one move that fast. I know. <laughs> he got a big body too. He oh, he's gonna go back. He was trucking. That's Watch the other one. That's the other one coming out. He's been sitting there for a while. There you go, Dave. That's a good shot. Mm. Right on the edge of the water. Okay. Oh, that's a good picture, I think.
roads are really bumpy. Alright, sorry guys, little camera issues. Oh, no problem, lo siento. Yo no rapido. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Mommy, hello. You going in? Hello. Where you going? Well, yes. Yeah. Country. But I saw a leper seal because always in uh, the stories speak up about leper seals, and I never seen before a leper seal here. And there uh, was uh, the possibility. But when was the Falkland War, uh, ladies, uh, you must take a seat here because later the gauchos are going to work there. <laughs> and the gauchos are in time of reproduction. <laughs> And looking for, well, it's so difficult to be a gaucho because now it's the television, it is the, well, the telephones, uh, satellite telephones, but uh, to be a gaucho in Patagonia is to be alone in the middle of uh, thousands of kilometers, nobody. And if it is an accident or something happened, for instance, we found uh, my uncle that was uh, dead for uh, three days, mm. was in uh, their bed, but sometimes they fall from, for instance, a horse. And uh, the other day was on a gaucho that was found uh, dead, and also the dog. The dog died by the, the master, not abandoned the, the gaucho, died mm. also by the gaucho. Terrible, because uh, sometimes, and a friend of mine was broken, fall from the horse was broken and try to put a message in the collar of the dog and try to send the dog to the house but the dog refused to abandon him by luck the horse returned to the to the farm with the saddle in the bed uh, on the other side and immediately found my my friend but mm. two days three days waiting it's terrible uh, the farm is and normally our gauchos are not married, live alone in the farm. And um, probably the gaucho have an, uh, a lady in the nearest city. 
and with children. Provide for the children, uh, give the last name, but not marry the lady, because the gaucho probably have another lady in uh, another farm <laughs> or in another city. <laughs> and uh, the gaucho lady used to have children with different gauchos. This is quite, uh, well, it's quite complicated for the school, for the teacher to <laughs> understand who we are, sister, brothers, and something like that. But it's coming from the time of our natives. Our natives were the famous Tehuelche natives that later you can see some photographs, very tall people, and they used to trek from here to Buenos Aires. The same trip that you have in this luxury cruise ship with ice creams, with rings, <laughs> you can imagine the natives trekking. Uh. Very long trek, but needs also porters. And this is the reason that the natives used to marry several ladies. Mm. Several ladies because needs porters. Mm -hmm. But to avoid problems with the ladies in between, the natives used to marry sisters, mm -hmm. daughters of the same family, sisters in between of the ladies that share the same man. Very intelligent, the natives, because many wives, only one mother-in-law. <laughs> 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 and in my first job, that I, I am a technical and ship production, uh, this is the reason I give you all the information about uh, this place. And um, creo que Claudia está en el pico que tenía problemas con alguien del baño. Yo me vine porque era un era un aquel arre allá. No, ahí no. Sí. And uh, in my first uh, job, uh, one of the employees was a directly descendant from one chief. And always the chief, by law, is necessary to marry several ladies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the reason that a famous, uh, well, native chief in Patagonia had 24 ladies. It's like the nobility in Europe that married the princess. It's uh, quite interesting because in our uh, families, we have all the different origins. For instance, my mother family, Germans, that came in before the first war to Patagonia. Mm. And the first friend of my German granny was a native lady, very tall, very big, that speak only native language, as some uh, words in Spanish, and my German uh, granny, blue eyes, blonde, blue eyes, speak only German. Mm -hmm. But they understand each other and my granny learned from the native to spin the wool from the guanaco and knit very good socks, mm. very strong socks with guanaco wool. And in the time of the Second World, the British lady used to knit socks for the soldiers and asked the Welsh lady that my German granny finish the socks with guanaco wool. And one day, some German ladies pay a visit to my granny and say, oh, Frau Weisse, you are knitting socks for the enemies. Mm. And my granny said, all the poor boys suffer cold feet. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason that in my fam family are native origin, Spanish, uh, Basque, uh, also, in my family, recommended the children. And if you have an accident, tell the doctor that you have the same uh, blood like the Basque people. Because it's so difficult in Argentine to find Welsh uh, families. But a lot of Basque. Many Basque move from the, the south of France and the north of Spain to Patagonia. And the fair farmers, for instance, in those farms were Basque origin. And this is the reason that we inherit the Basque bee red, because it's very windy here, and instead to have a, 
a big hut like in Mexico or like in, in uh, well, the Cowboys in the United States, we use this beret because it's not uh, taken by the, the wind. And uh, also, this is typical trousers, it's Arab trousers from Spain, very good to ride on horseback. And Argentine, Argentina means silver from Argentum. And this is the reason that the gauchos use, for instance, these kind of things in, in silver. This is a special protection to avoid to be redneck. <laughs> <laughs> because the sun is so strong and this is a uh, special protection right. and also you are going to see that our gauchos fill with silver the horses and himself the lady no, the lady normally is simple with the beauty of the lady is sufficient but the gauchos uh, use the shoes. Yeah. and the shoes this mm -hmm. is carpincho it's a kind of, of leather from an aquatic rodent, carpincho, capybaras. Oh, capybaras, the capybaras that are the all, uh, now is an pest in some neighborhoods yeah. in Buenos Aires because some people uh, have gardens in uh, wild areas and now the capybaras, with not enemies, are in reproduction and during the night are coming to eat the grass and the garden, the flower. And they're capybara like, produces like a kind of uh, rat, very good like leather, rats. very comfortable. They're, they're in the rat, we I'm call like these huge. alpargatas. It's also from the Basque origin. It's padrino from the French uh, Basque. Please sit here because the gaucho is going to work here and also later the gaucho is going to work with those tables there. To yeah. We try uh, normally on the farms, the. Uh, well, in, the, in, the, in my time, not computers, no telephone, and, but we play with wild animals, and we have pets, different kind of pets, mm -hmm. and also in some uh, farms, guanaco, or a goat, or uh, eagles, spiders. I introduce you, Claudia, my <laughs> friend. Uh -huh. She also... Bought a beret to be uh, oh, a yeah. special um, introduce of you, my model. She <laughs> 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 is a teacher with good salary. Oh, no. <laughs> Teachers are uh, with a very low salary in Argentina. And uh, we are now, uh, normally middle class was the strongest in Argentina, but now we are going into very rich and very poor. Do you know what is this? Mate. Mate. You saw the Uruguayans drinking mate? Yeah. yeah. In, uh, also in the funeral. Also in the funeral, drinking mate. You know the origin of mate? was a typical drink in Paraguay. The Guarani natives used to drink mate with an agrog like this and a bamboo. Always drinking mate. Mm. <coughs> when the Jesuits saw the natives drinking something, the Jesuits said probably it's a drug to be in contact with the evil spirits and decided that mate was prohibited by the church. <laughs> no more mate for the natives, for the Guarani natives. But later, notice that the Guarani workers were very lazy to work. Something happened, <laughs> nobody understand, and later notice that was lacking mate. Because mate burned all the cholesterol from the meat and it's plenty of vitamin C and minerals. Mm. And when the Jesuits discovered that mate was the solution for their workers, mate was blessed by the church <laughs> oh. <laughs> and produced a commercial church. production yeah. of uh, mate for all over the world. Mm -hmm. We send mate as Paraguayan green tea to Manila, to California, oh. everywhere. 
from but the was in directly competition with the production of tea from Ceylon. And in those times, mm -hmm. the Frank Masons that control the business of Mate were speaking with, behind the ear of the king of Spain, and the king of Spain decided no more production of Mate, no more Jesuits in South America, <laughs> collapsed the missions, and now we can see the ruins in, the, in Uruguay, in Argentina, Paraguay, and mate is a typical drink in, uh, in, Ar in Paraguay, the original place, Uruguay, Argentina, and now in the south of Chile, also drinking mate. But it's very typical that we share the mate with all, and it's with hot water. It's there with hot water. Uh, some, some ladies used to put some sugar or cacao meal or some uh, mint, the sheep is not a South American animal. The natives in Peru, Bolivia, crossbreed guanacos with vicuña and produce al alpacas and llamas. Mm -hmm. This is the reason that, uh, and if you visit Peru, not now, now it's like a revolution, pity. Yeah. And uh, you are going to see the vicuñas, vicuna, vicuñas, wild and the guanacos as we have here wild but alpacas and llamas always domestic mm -hmm. and uh, produce a nice uh, fiber to knit but uh, normally they cut the shearing the animals with a uh, half moon knife tumis with obsidian or metal to cut the wool when the first European saw Patagonia, discovered that it's a very good land, a very good land, very good land for wool production, and introduced Creole merinos from Spain. The merinos are originally from Spain. The English took some rams and used to uh, Australia, and the MacArthur convicts the MacArthur family produced the best quality of wool and later was uh, so important for Australia and for uh, the English crown that the English crown gives to this convict family, MacArthur, the title of uh, Sir and Lady. Well, Patagonia, the first sailors saw the area, the first uh, immigrants came, our natives were nomadics, not breed animals. When my family, the Welsh uh, pioneers, came here, they tried to keep some sheep, as in Wales, but pumas here, and it uh, was very difficult to control. Later by later came Basque origin families and uh, <laughs> introduced the sheep, and introduced normally merinos because merinos are very resistant animals that all their energy is into the production of wool, not the production of meat or the production of, uh, of uh, uh, for instance, milk, like other kinds. And they were introduced some animals from the Falkland Islands and from the north of Argentina, and little by little, the Basque family were working to keep sheep. Was very, very difficult. <laughs> Was very difficult the first time to keep the farms. Because, for instance, no fresh water was necessary to drill by hand, a hundred meters. Sometimes the man digging, the lady taking the soil out for the production of water. And in those times when the Basque ladies are pregnant and have time to ha deliver the baby, uh, they have a campsite by the sea coast because it's the only place with sufficient water to <coughs> clean themselves and the babies. You can imagine, very difficult. But in those times, the price of the wool was high 
was very important the production of merino wool for uniforms and it was on a high competition in between Germany and England for the production of wool in Patagonia. And this is the reason that big companies from England and from Germany bought huge farms and produced good quality of wool. We introduced some rum from Australia. My uncle John bought a rum in Australia, a pedigree rum, that was travel, traveling in business, the rum. <laughs> And I remember that my uncle had a car, luxury car, those uh, American uh, from the 60s, luxury second-hand car, mm -hmm. take the rear seat and put the ram there. <laughs> and I was a boy, and I took see the luxury car, and out of the window, the head of the ram with very big horn, <laughs> because my uncle, very proud of the... The ram showed the ram everybody, <laughs> and my aunt very jealous because my aunt, my uncle spent more money and time with the ram than with her. <laughs> <laughs> and we produce Mailed. very good quality of merino wool that received the name of the white gold from Patagonia was very, very uh, expensive, and all the people uh, sport the wool. Normally, we export the wool to England, and the English bought the wool from Australia, from Patagonia, mix, and later sell Scottish sweaters <laughs> in the uh, handicraft shop. Very nice uh, sweaters made with uh, our wool. And little by little, they were working with the farm. But later, the explosion of the volcanoes, the economy of our economy, like tango moving from one side to the other, inflation, <laughs> was very difficult to keep the farm. And many farmers decided not to breed any more merinos, to abandon the farm. They sold the farm for the mines that uh, take gold or silver, or to put uh, wind mills, no more the production of wool. <coughs> By luck, San Guillermo, this farm, the owners, with a very intelligent way, decided to keep alive the spirit of the production of wool. Very few sheep, because there are many abandoned dogs that uh, kill the lamb, the volcanic ash, uh, the volcanic ash covered the area, was very difficult, but very few sheep for shearing, but the possibility is like this, to have a show and to tell about the spirit of Patagonia. Mm -hmm. Very few sheep, but now we are going to shear all the ladies that are, <laughs> the that are in the first line. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, madam. He is going to be volunteer to show how we can trade the lambs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's your decision. <laughs> okay. And uh, by luck, this farm is alive. Keep the for tradition the spirit of Patagonia to produce wool, and today, more special day. Chicos, traten de no hablar, please. And um, now, we have the special day, because we are going to introduce in this spirit of Patagonia for this gentleman that is the owner of uh, San Guillermo. <laughs> And this gentleman is going to be the shearer, a gaucho, that is directly descendant from a long line of chiefs, of native chiefs of Patagonia. Le estoy que son. And the other boy, that is uh, Mary, is directly descendant from also another line of chiefs and witches. Ah. And witches. witches. And if you like <laughs> some magic, magic.
And he said that he's the owner, but not the boss. <laughs> yeah. Who is the boss? My wife. My wife. <laughs> Argentina is a, very, is a very machista country. When we discuss with a lady, always the last words are kept by the man. And the last words are, yes, darling. Yes, darling. Yes, darling. Yes, darling. Yes, darling. <laughs> this is the history that we have some ladies that control the country, like Evita, yeah. like uh, Cristina now, and those famous ladies in Argentina. Well, and this is one year old, the wolf. Chicos, traten de no hablar porque si no pienso me están preguntando. This is one year of production of wool because it's only one year period here in, uh, in this area of Patagonia. And it's one year. And sometimes in, um, in winter time it's lacking uh, grass and it's weak in this area and it's not good quality because we need how long is the wool, how strong, the color, the fiber, micros, quanta micrones is it? 19 uh, micros is their production, touch. What do you feel? Soft and something else? A ver, vos que soy campo, toca. ¿Qué sentí? ¿Qué más? Because sometimes it's oily because it's lanolin. Oh, you know lanolin? Yeah. This is lanolin that probably the ladies know because it's used a lot in cosmetics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that he always recommended for the beauty of the ladies, but he said that our ladies in this group are so used sufficient, beautiful, not need the value. <laughs> <laughs> he said that it's not good for the Asahel uh, And this that. is <laughs> the same wool, but comb wool. This is the comb wool after the, uh, well, the, the industrial process. Well, you know Claudia, <laughs> but with the Celtic magic, I transform her into Dolly. You remember Dolly? <laughs> the famous uh, clone sheet. Salute the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wool grows differently in the legs. It's a very short strong that used for carpets. There is a wool around the head that covers the eyes and is necessary to cut because and if it is not uh, in the merinos are growing, growing and the animal is going to die and also get blind. It's necessary to cut all the wool with very uh, experience not to avoid the, the production of milk in case of the use and or the testicles in case of the males, yeah. and also using carpet, but the best quality of the wool is here, because receive more irrigation, uh, the blood grows longer, stronger, and is good for sweaters. There is another kind of wool that is <laughs> pollution that we use uh, to change into Poor very dark body. color, like black. Thank you, Dolly. <laughs> this is the reason that with uh, uh, the gaucho is going to shear later, we classify the table. This is the reason that uh, I clean those tables, because we classify the wool and put in the different boxes, and later put it there in the, in the press. And uh, the in the in the oldest times, from the Bible times, the people used this kind of scissors, metal scissors, in uh, brass, copper, 
a ledger. Well, till now we use in many times this kind of scissor. Ledger was used uh, a kind of professional machine with a uh, motor with uh, gasoline a generator with gasoline, and now the majority of the farms use electricity with a windmill or a, some production of electricity, and this kind of scissors, and use different system. The Argentine system is that one gaucho, as you can see in the pictures, bring the animal to the shear that the gaucho is going to work. And, uh, and the tally high system from Australia and New Zealand is uh, the one person that takes the sheep. Mo more expensive salaries for workers in Australia and New Zealand than here. We use more people here. <laughs> and you are going to see uh, how the gaucho is going to work with the sheep like dancing a tango <laughs> and control the animal with the legs. Le estoy hablando de vos, eh? and control the animal with the legs. <laughs> and the sheep put a romantic face because you know that it's summertime and it's necessary to take the sweater out. Yes. And merinos are over domestic animals. And if we not shear them, they die. Because over domestic animals, for instance, the wild sheep in the mountains, Normally in springtime they lose their wool, but here it's necessary to cut. Okay. Uh, we have some uh, volunteers. We need more volunteers. Two volunteers. Okay. okay. Also, ladies, you can work on the farms. The ladies work harder than in the in than the men. Always. No. We need volunteers, gauchos. We need new gauchos. Ustedes van a ir, bueno, mi nombre es Patrick, Piri, Piri. Mira, mira los por día que te conseguí. You are going? Sure. I don't know if they need more. Need more? Okay. More the merry. Enjoy the day. Good salary. Good salary. You are single? La última soltera. How, when, what year was this farm opened? Cuando empezó esta... For tourists? For tourists? No, no, no. Cuando no. 1898. Nice, very nice. 1898. And uh, was dancing with the economy. Y en con turismo empezaste hace cuando? 27. That was quick. What happened? Camera! Camera. <laughs> I didn't know about your phone. Just the take your phone. Running. Well, of course the sheep are there. That's what I you know. Yeah. I never see a gaucho with a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> 27 years working with tourists. Oh, okay. Uh, we work with the students also here, and it's uh, quite interesting because they learn. For instance, children from Buenos Aires, they never saw a, a sheep alive and have the experience. Normally, a uh, sheep lives seven years. Oh, okay. And later, we take the animal uh, for the market for meat. Mm -hmm. My mother used to prepare always the, the sauce for the pasta with mutton meat. Mm -hmm. But here, he, uh, their profit are you. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason that the animals died really naturally. Mm -hmm. For sometimes about 10 or 12 years. Mm -hmm. Because even and if it is a very old sheep, it's better because known that it's time for shearing and it's so romantic and mm -hmm. you can shear, <laughs> no problem. It's the animals know yeah. about the seasons and the yeah. uh, and uh, in this moment, the, this farm uh, are with uh, 200, no more sheep, because it's necessary to control, because there are a lot of abandoned dogs from the cities that came and killed the lambs, and also people for Christmas, it's a typical meal and barbecue with a lamb, very good lambs that we have here. 
better than in Piwe, these people li knows about Piwe, this, the Pampas, <laughs> but our, our mutton meat is better. <laughs> and uh, because it's the grass is so tender, so nice, not the strong smell of the, the mutton meat. And uh, this is the reason that uh, we, uh, we control and produce normally wool and not milk and not, uh, not meat. What happened? They don't want to come. <laughs> 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 they don't want to come. <laughs> Not good, girls. It's, uh, it's very typical that the ladies used to work in uh, in the farm as a gaucho. And uh, I remember uh, the ladies in my family learned from the natives used to use the boleadoras, the three oh, stones okay. with a long rope to catch the wild animals or the horses. We fight in the school with the other children sometimes with the boleadora. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem for the sheep is the grass that uh, destroys their teeth. An animal that is uh, with sufficient uh, uh, energy to have more reproduction sometimes is necessary to take out from the farm because they lose their teeth. Mm. And water. Water is uh, the principal problem for the farms. Sufficient grass and sufficient water. What happened? ¿Qué pasó? Mm -hmm. It's difficult for him, but now we start it. We set it. They are uh, looking for the sheep or artificial insemination? <laughs> oh, look at the gaucho! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. A big one. Heavy. Ponete atrás ahí. ¿Cómo es tu nombre? Ponete atrás y sosténelo ahí. Sí. For your face, is male or female? Open the legs, touch. Open the legs. It's a male or female? Smell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a male. But from a long distance, and a gaucho like this gentleman or the other one riding on horseback and say, a male there on the hill. <laughs> How a gaucho from a long distance distinguish a male or a female? No horns. No horns. No horns. No horns. Sometimes we have horns, a veces tenemos cuernos, pero bueno. Not horns. No. Not the size. For the tail. Because when the lambs were born, the first work is to cut the tail. And for the males, we live a shorter... Uh, uh, Tail, and for the female, just no tail. And, and if you can see no tail, it's a you. And if you can see a, a, a tail, probably it's a ram or a castrated male. And the rams, open the legs, and the ram possess very big testicles, sometimes too big. And my uncle John, one of the rams for sale, was so heavy testicles that touched the floor. <laughs> that was not good for sale. And my uncle, very special gentleman, put some eyes on the testicles. The testicles rise to the yeah. correct position and sold it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the sheep, in case of this uh, tree, with the hand near the mouth, Bite? <laughs> bite? <laughs> bite? Okay, no. I'll bite back. Kick like a horse? <laughs> Kick like a horse? <laughs> yes or no? Use the head to bat like uh, a bull? Yes. Yeah. Swim? No. no. Swim? 
liters. How many liters of milk produce a merino you per day? Two or six? Oh, what? Six. Six. Uh, six. You say it's six? Yeah. How many times the lamb suck milk from the mother? Receive milk from the mother? Yes, or 30. 10 or 30? 30. 30. And a baby? 30. ¿Cuánto mama un bebé por día? <laughs> Early in the morning, uh -oh. Uh -oh. as you in the cruise ship, when the sun rises, <laughs> the ship stretching the legs and yawning and dancing with the music from the cruise ship? <laughs> yes yeah. or not? <laughs> Who produces more quality of manure? Excrement. <laughs> a small sheep or a big cow? Sheep. Sheep. Quality. Quality. Not quantity. How is their vision? Is black and white? Right, so in black and white or color? In color or black and white? Color or black and white? Like the dogs. The At the eye color. No, can no, they can see, they color? see color? Or they ah. just see black and white? Black and what animals, color, black like black the dogs? or Are white, are there liquid uh, wool? Liquid wool? Liquid wool. You never heard about it? Mm, no. No? no. no? Well, All the answers of those questions are in a special CD that he sells in the shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is over domesticated animal, merino, that not used their mouth to bite only have uh, teeth in the, in the lower uh, bottom, like this, that take out sometimes, uproot the grass. This is not good for ecology. And normally not kick as uh, horses, not use the head to bump that Other animals, the wild animals, normally use the horns right. to, to protect themselves. Oh, and this is a, a, an easy target for wolves or for foxes or for uh, street dogs that enter during the night and kill the animal. Yes. Produce two liters of milk per day. The, the lamb receive about 30 times tick, tick, mm -hmm. having uh, milk. Early in the morning, when the sun rises, he's going to yawn and stretch the legs <laughs> and swim very well <laughs> and produce more quality of excrement, manure, than a cow. This is the reason that in Spain used to move the animals from one place to the other to fertilize the soil. And Their vision is in black and white. And in New Zealand, that have not merinos, they are corridor and other kind of animals, more uh, thick uh, wool, they process the wool and produce liquid wool that is a long fiber that you can knit later all kind of sweaters and things because it's always the same diameter and very, very long. Probably not resistant as the natural wood. It's okay, it's okay. ¿Que lo suelten? Sí, sí. Suelten, suelten, chicos. Ok, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can control all by himself. <laughs> don't need three people. Yeah. It was, it was very hard to get him. He's looking at, at the, the, their teeth because depends on their teeth is uh, how long he's going to leave the animal. And look how he, he is going to work with the sheep. Well, in this case, with the ram.
later and if you like to move to film or to take photos you can uh, well, you're right about yeah <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> like going, I, don't I don't know if I like this or not. <laughs> Look at her, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> He's just getting it off to throw it away. He likes it. Yeah. They know it's necessary. This is dirty. Now we're getting a little thick stuff. If you put your leg up, you put your leg up. Yeah. Knows what to do. the wool and produce more wool than a uh, uh, you. About seven uh, kilograms. It's no. not too much. It's a young animal. Depends of the teeth is uh, that we know about the Mm. Wow. 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 Oh, the clothing. That's all one piece. The, uh, the whole piece. It's all one piece. Yeah. yeah. Very talented. Yeah, very. Uh, please, madam. Uh, be careful, sir. It's going to through the. Uh, the lanolin keep showing the wool. And he is going to classify the wool and to put in the different boxes. Oh. Mm. Later, uh, put in the press that we press with our legs and use the uh, uh, energy of the machine to, uh, to pack the wool and directly with all the, the dust and the oh. lanolin is for export. Oh. 
Un carnero ya para reproducción, cuatro dientes, ¿no? De dos dientes. Ya ahora puede sí. reproducir. Sí. Just from here is possible to, to have reproduction. It's young, but it's, uh, well. But once a year, twice a year, do you cut the wool? Cut the wool. Ah, the wool uh, shearing uh, period is here only once. Oh. Only once. once a year. But in other areas with more grass, for instance, Uruguay that possess more grass, sometimes twice. But uh, here is only once. Uh, July, August is the normal period for this area, but uh, uh, for shows we keep some animals with all the wool for the show till March, April. This is a problem because it's uh, from the head that the grazing uh, receive a lot of seeds and the grass possess uh, like a thorny seed, like harrowhead. Se te durmió entre las piernas. ¿Cuánto puede valer una oveja ahora? Bye, buddy. This is a vitamin and a medicine to control an internal and external parasite. Look at the eyes. spring we gather all the lambs because it's necessary to mark volunteer yeah. it's necessary to mark a special signal of property in the ear of the animal later you can see the animal and for the, the cut in the ears you know who is the owner and also in the springtime all the lambs were born with a very long tail that later is a bushy tail with a lot of wool and is humid for the excrement and urine and attracted flies. And it is necessary to cut the, the tail both in male and females. We leave some male and small right. tail and the other sharp. And <laughs> 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 it's an agaucho that is coming with the lamb open, the legs, we pass the testicles here and close and the animal is castrated. Why we castrated the lambs? Because we control the reproduction with the special pedigree rams and also because the castrated male produce all their energy in wool and not in horns, not in reproduction, all in wool and lives longer, boring life but longer. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the most modern system. The old system that is my uncle farmer still use is one gaucho open the legs, the other gaucho take the long uh, knife and cut a little piece of the testicle sac, press the testicles and use their teeth to take out the oh. testicles. Oh. I saw this when I was a boy and I crossed my legs. <laughs> <laughs>
but it's necessary to be a gaucho with the very strong teeth because and if you have artificial teeth you lose your teeth in between 2,000 animals. Yeah. Later with the testicles and the tails is a special food for the gauchos that now is included in your snack. <laughs> well, now we have also to finish this visit Later you have time for shopping, ladies, don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a special snack with gauchos bread that we call torta frita and also pastelitos that uh, Quincy's pate sweet uh, kind of pie oh, and croissants, ham and cheese croissants with tea, coffee, milk and today for the first time, also, and a gentleman from a near uh, area brought wine. Yeah. Oh. Wine that you have the possibility to taste is Pinot Noir, the kind of wine. Later you tell me and if it is good or not, because it's the first time. We thanks this Gentlemen, the Gaucho and Alfredo. And Thank you. And Dolly. Yeah. Yeah. And follow for the snack. First the snack, later you have plenty of time for shopping. Excellent. And Nosotros, la gente de acá que nos fueron buscando <risa> y ahora van a lugares más apartados. Así que hay mucha diferencia. Madrid es la segunda ciudad. Yo conocí Madrid. Nosotros nos casamos en el año 70 y vinimos a Madrid en el 71. 71, o sea que hace más de 50 años. ¿Pero qué era? Nada. Yo tenía un amigo que era. Nada, no había nada. Pero no había nada. Y no hace tanto, 50 Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, huh? Yeah. Nice little shop here. Do you ship to the United States too? Um, we actually are doing the tick production. You know, we just produce, you know, in every harvest we produce a limited amount. Of oh, okay. Models. Oh, okay. But, well, it's, uh, well, you can follow us on Instagram and uh, probably we can, we can yeah. do something about it. Yeah, because I don't know if they let us bring, they said don't, we can't bring. Well, actually, I suppose that you can bring six bits, you have to leave them in uh, oh, okay. the ship and then they give them to you uh, once you are uh, off the ship. Yeah. 
Hi, what is the name of your ranch? Estancia San Guillermo. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Gracias, señor.
Goodbye, pretty little city.